Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Arnold. I'm looking forward to welcoming you all to our uh, first ever uh, Sailor webinar um, featuring my co-panelists, uh, Sarah Cunningham from the American Council on Education and Sharice Gardner from Sailor Academy as well. But we're looking forward to telling you more about um, the American Council on Education's uh, credit review process, as well as uh, Sailor Academy and how we're helping promote um, access and flexibility for students. Before we get started, I wanted to uh, very quickly uh, poll you all and see what your familiarity with, is with ACE um, credit. So it looks like we have a group that has a pretty good familiarity with um, ACE and ACE credit recommendations, um, which is great. Uh, so we look forward to chatting a little bit more with you all to, so that others can learn how this will, um, expanding their ACE recommendations uh, that they accept will benefit their institution. And with that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Sarah. Sarah? Thank you. Um, so it's good to, to virtually meet everybody. My name is Sarah Cunningham. I'm the acting director of the Credit College Recommendation Program at the American Council on Education. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our evaluation process and some of the changes that we've been working on over the last year that we think will really um, enhance some of the benefits to institutions. So I'm going to see if I can share my screen here for a moment. And maybe my co-panelists will let me know if that works. I see. Excellent. Okay. Um, so the American Council on Education uh, is probably most well known to colleges and universities for our work as a membership organization and our advocacy and government relations work on behalf of the higher education sector. Um, right now, we're working furiously on uh, working on Capitol Hill on relief packages, putting out guidance for colleges and universities um, who are adjusting and responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I'll encourage you, if you haven't already, to, to check out some of our resources that we're putting together. We do our best to bring together panels of experts throughout um, higher education uh, to help provide that, that guidance um, and that community that is going to help us all get through this. Um, but ACE also has a history of over 60 years of evaluating learning that happens outside of the traditional college classroom and translating it into credit hours, into sort of an academic currency to help post-traditional learners access higher education and complete degrees faster. Um, over the course of that time, we've evaluated over 40,000 different learning experiences. Uh, this work started in the military um, with the evaluation of formal training through the military. Um, and in the 1970s, we expanded the program to evaluate military occupations, as well as formal training that happens in the workforce. And these days, that now encompasses a wide range of alternative education providers, um, folks like the Sailor Academy that are really out they're supporting student success by helping them um, complete graduation requirements, uh, corporate training, uh, certification exams, all kinds of um, sort of across the range of things that people are doing to learn and build skills outside of higher education, but that are of sort of post-secondary level quality. We've always aligned our standards to those post-secondary expectations. We use tools like Bloom's Taxonomy um, in order to help guide the recommendations that we make. Um, and today we also validate workplace competencies in the courses that we, that we evaluate if the, the organization organization is interested in that because we know that there are some learners that might be going through a program that we've evaluated that's offered by their employer. They might not yet be ready to go to college. That might be something that's gonna come down the road for them, but this training might help open up an opportunity for promotion um, or a new job that they're looking for. So today I wanna give you guys a little bit of a better understanding of our process, which underlies the recommendations that we make for programs uh, like Sailors. So see if I can move on to the next slide. There we go. Um, 
So our process um, has been recognized by the Council on Higher Education Accreditation. Um, we'd encourage you to check out the joint statement on the transfer and award of credit um, that was put out by CHEA and ACRO um, and the American Council on Education, um, really to try and encourage organizations to feel comfortable um, using credit for prior learning to help their students succeed. Um, it, it's a process, as I said, that sort of serves as an industry standard and all of our participating organizations from the College Board and their AP and CLEP exams, DSST, um, to folks like Sailor, organizations like Google and Walt Disney and all of these folks go through the same process with the same rigorous standards. Um, so we start off um, with a, what we call an eligibility um, check. And this is really where uh, before we engage subject matter experts, our staff go in and make sure that these programs are structured in a way um, that is going to allow a, a successful evaluation. We check expectations um, such as uh, the learning outcomes that they are able to explain to us. Um, do they have appropriate assessments? assessments, how are their courses structured, um, their grading standards. Uh, we look at the actual learning experience and environment that the student learning is taking place in um, and check those sorts of basic uh, requirements. Uh, things like, um, like the qualifications of their instructors are a big one. Make sure that classes are being taught by folks um, who are qualified to teach them. Um, student record management and security processes, all that kind of thing. Um, but really the meat of the review is not conducted by ACE staff. We rely on subject matter expert faculty from accredited colleges and universities that we recruit to participate on evaluations with us. So that next step um, is to put together a faculty team um, based on the subject areas that are involved in the course. So we make sure that we have at least two faculty per subject area and some courses may encompass multiple subject areas. Um, particularly we see this in the military where we have some learning experiences that are counted as a single course, but they involve thousands of hours um, of training that these learners go through um, and they can encompass multiple subject areas. So some of these reviews have very large faculty teams um, that we assemble. Um, those faculty must be currently teaching and have at least five years of experience teaching in that subject area at an accredited college or university. Um, and we do our best to make sure that in our recruitment of faculty, we pull from all different accrediting regions because we don't want our process to sort of accidentally end up um, reflecting the preferences of a particular regional accreditor. We want to make sure that it's applicable across the board. Um, nationally. And for those faculty, we provide them with um, some guidance, uh, some tools, rubrics, um, tools like I mentioned, Bloom's taxonomy to make sure that they all are sort of normed with our expectations and standards. But we really rely on those experts to let us know, to keep our process current, right? To really reflect their expertise in the field and what they know is current expectations for that particular discipline in the field so that our recommendations always reflect current expectations in that field of study. Um, so we really do want that feedback from them if they say, hey, okay, you know, this course matches up with what you'll see um, in colleges right now. But we know, for instance, that conversations are moving in this direction, um, you know, in a few years when these folks go up for re-review, um, we want to make sure that they're ready to evolve with the field um, so that we make sure that we're always staying current as much as we possibly can. During the actual evaluation, um, those experts then go through and review everything about that course that we can get our hands on. Um, they evaluate the, the syllabi, the sort of schedule, um, assignments, those learning outcomes, um, 
assessments we put a particular emphasis on. Um, again, because we are often evaluating learning experiences that happen in non-traditional um, contexts, um, you know, they might be learning while they're uh, on the job in some fashion and doing formal training that's interspersed with things. Um, we want to make sure that at the end of the day, we are checking that each of those learning outcomes is assessed at an appropriate level of complexity and rigor for the sort of level of sophistication of the learning outcomes that they've associated with the course. Um, and so it's really about that scope, that depth, that rigor um, that we ask them to look at um, and to think also about that college equivalent. So if there is a sort of standard expectation for an introductory level course in a particular discipline, we want those faculty members to compare the learning that happens in um, the program they're evaluating with those expectations so that we can make sure that they really line up. Um, and at the conclusion of the review, we issue a final report. Um, the reviewers must reach consensus on what the credit recommendation will be. And it takes the form of a number of semester hours at a particular educational level, um, lower division, upper division, graduate. We also sometimes issue recommendations at the vocational or certificate level um, and in a particular subject area. Um, it is possible going through a review that no credit is awarded. Um, if the course is not structured in a way that, uh, that allows them to really ensure that that learning is documented and that any student who passes it has indeed met the learning outcomes, we might issue no credit recommendation. We do try to catch those kinds of things during the eligibility visit. Um, we also might find that there's the potential for a significant and meaningful level of learning, but there are some um, key aspects of the course missing, um, say a particular learning outcome that's important to the course, but a, we, they say there's an assessment and it didn't show up in the review, we can issue a conditional recommendation and give them a chance to, to fix that um, before it's published. Um, nothing gets published until all of the, the appropriate um, aspects of the course are available um, and implemented in the course itself. And at that point, we publish to the national guide. Um, so if you guys are familiar with our uh, credit recommendations, you've hopefully checked out the national guide before. Um, within the next month or so, you will see a new and revised national guide that we're very excited about. Um, it's going to have a little bit additional functionality, some better search options um, for schools that are receiving transcripts and needing to look up courses and match them um, with your curricula. Um, and we'll also be able to add some supplemental material in there as well as our organizations are, are interested in doing that. Um, and at that point, those organizations um, also have transcripts available to their students. So in addition to conducting the recommendations, ACE does the credentialing um, around those experiences to make sure that the students have a portable way um, to explain and showcase what they know um, and the work that they've done to a college uh, that they want to go to. And this sort of gets me to um, some of the changes that we've been going through over the next, over the last year, um, because we're now issuing some additional credentials in addition to, um, to official transcripts, we're also issuing digital badges. And this is uh, a new initiative that we're very excited about. Um, over the last year, as I said, we've worked to modernize our credentials because we know that colleges still need an official transcript. And in our new system, um, you will get a transcript from students that looks a little bit different than it did in the past, but it is still an official transcript that comes directly from the transcripting platform um, to the school rather than going through the student. So it's something that you can trust hasn't been altered um, or messed with in any way. But we also know that learners need some more flexibility in how they put their credential to use. A traditional academic transcript 
we've heard from employers is not that useful to them in hiring folks into positions. Um, grades are a little bit hard to translate into skills. Um, and so adding badges uh, to the credentials that we issue mean that we have a little bit more of a flexible, less formal way for students to share their qualifications. And we're really excited for one, just a chance to explain to students what they've learned to help them tell their story. If you've worked with students, you know that, um, and really with anyone, um, it takes a little bit of encouragement to sort of own the learning that they've done, um, a little bit of validation and recognition so that they can then sort of talk about their own skills um, and what they know if they're going to an employer and going to a job interview, that sort of thing. Um, but we also want to start using some of the technology that's available now to make some stronger connections between um, our between our learners and the opportunities that we think should be open to them based on the courses that they've gone through. So for us, they don't, digital badges don't replace a transcript. Um, but as an example, we are issuing digital badges right now on Credly's um, Acclaim platform. Um, and this work was supported by the Lumina Foundation as part of their effort to really connect learning all across the work and learn ecosystem. Um, and in that system right now. So a student who's earned a badge from an organization will see skills that are associated with it. Um, that little box there that you're seeing that says public speaking, if they click on that box, it will take them to labor market insights data where they can see occupations that need that skill. Um, they can see average salaries in those occupations. Uh, employers that are hiring cities where this is a growth opportunity and a couple of clicks gets them straight through to a job posting. Um, very shortly, they may even be able to get job offers right in the platform if they opt into that. Um, and so what we want to move towards um, is, you know, a lot of that kind of supportive infrastructure exists for employment. It doesn't yet exist on the education side for educational pathways that might serve students. What we really want to be able to do is help students find a college based on the credit that they'll receive for their prior learning there and give them a chance to compare and contrast. Um, ideally, we should in the future be able to say to a student, based on the credentials that you've earned already and the credits that are recommended through ACE and accepted by these schools, you've already completed 6% of this program at this school, here's what the rest of it will cost you, and here are the outcomes of students like you who attend that program. And here's another program that you've completed a little bit more of, but it might be more expensive, to really put information at their fingertips um, that will allow them to find the right school for them. Um, and for institutions, our learners are a growing demographic of college students. Maybe the only growing demographic of college students right now is post-traditional students. We really need more institutions who are ready to serve them and meet their needs. Um, and so this is where we sort of hope to see um, a bit of a start of a shift in attitudes because I think it can be natural to see programs that are offering um, courses uh, that are easier for students to take more flexibly as competing for those credits. But we know from research that students who bring in credit for prior learning um, from uh, programs like Sailors, um, they persist longer at the schools that they choose as their home, they graduate at higher rates, and as a result, they take more credits at the schools that they, um, uh, that they attend. So especially now, I think with everything that's happening in the world, we feel strongly um, at ACE that we need to find creative ways to help learners who have been displaced from work, who have had to delay their educational journey, um, get them back on track as much as possible. We need to get out of their way, clear the barriers, eliminate the hoops that they have to jump through, um, and really recognize that programs like Sailors that provide flexibility are going to become even more important as folks are trying to balance all of the different responsibilities that they have, family, community, work, and school. Um, these learners are 
they're incredible people. Um, they are highly motivated. They work incredibly hard um, to get this, to get their education done. They value education incredibly strongly. Um, and they bring with them to what sort of we consider the beginning of their educational journey, a set of skills um, that needs to be honored and recognized by our processes. Um, so we really feel strongly that now is an important time um, for schools to really embrace flexible pathways that help onboard students into their programs um, and help those who have to stop out for various reasons because life gets in the way. It's been getting in the way in a fairly dramatic fashion recently, but it's always been the case that that, that happens to some of our students. We need to be flexible with them to make sure that they can continue their journey and achieve their goals open up those opportunities that help them um, find sustainable careers that will grow with them throughout their lives. Um, yeah, and so that's what I wanted to tell you guys about today. And now I'll let um, our, the folks from Sailor tell you about their awesome programs. Thank you so much, Sarah, for um, going over AC's process and showing folks a little bit more um, giving folks a little bit more information about how much detail um, you put into um, conducting these reviews. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Again, my name is Jackie Arnold. I'm uh, looking forward to telling you a little bit about Sailor Academy and how we are able to leverage the benefit of um, having undergone these uh, ACE reviews um, to benefit our partner institutions and the students that we serve. Um, Sailor Academy, as uh, some of you may know, uh, but I've seen a lot of new faces in the attendee list um, or new names in the attendee list. We are a nonprofit education initiative um, that is working to increase access to education to learners worldwide. Um, we indeed have a student in nearly every, in literally every country in the world um, now. Um, they're coming to us to take advantage of our um, online courses that we offer um, completely free of charge for students to study. And since this is a big part of every meeting that I, every call that I have, uh, when I'm talking to folks like you at, at the university level, um, why are we free? What is the catch? Um, there is no catch. Um, as I said before, we are a nonprofit. Our founder, uh, Michael Saylor, is a philanthropist and um, entrepreneur um, in the DC area where we are based and he was able to go to MIT um, on a full ride scholarship and he credits that to uh, now being a very successful entrepreneur. He's the president CEO and chairman of MicroStrategy um, and so we are a part of his um, philanthropy. Um, he wants to have the opportunity to give back and we're really um, really grateful to be a part of that mission to increase access to education. Um, so we, we fulfill that mission, as I said before, by offering free online courses. Um, our courses fall into two major buckets, the career skills and professional development, um, which are shorter courses to help um, students be able to earn the skills that they need to um, either get into an entry level position or move up into a position, so communications, leadership, introduction to management, those type of skills, um, or we have university length, university level um, courses, which are longer courses, and within that bucket, our um, ACE uh, reviewed and recommended courses fall. Um, those uh, include courses such as college success, um, critical thinking, um, business disciplines, computer science, um, and we've also just recently launched our new ESL program, uh, which was something our students had been contacting us and requesting. We, we want to learn English skills, particularly since um, the vast, the more and more of our students are coming from areas outside of the US and outside of the English speaking world. Um, we wanted to have a way that they could have access to English skills um, for free. So we're really excited about telling you um, more about what our courses look like um, and giving you a quick tour, which my colleague Sharice will do in just a moment. Um, and then telling you a bit about how we think a partnership with us using these ACE recommendations, using this verified process that 
um, you've already heard talk, uh, Sarah talk about can really benefit your institution as well. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we partner, and when I mention, when I say that we partner, we partner um, for free. We don't charge anyone anything to work with us. Um, with colleges and universities uh, using those ACE recommendations as a, a doorway to build a partnership uh, to help students um, either come back to or join or maintain satisfactory academic progress through program. Um, we also have been partnering with nonprofits who are looking to increase um, access for either their citizens or clients or their communities to educational opportunities. And so now my uh, colleague Sharice is going to tell you a little bit more about our courses um, and give you a brief tour of one of our courses as well. Sharice? Thank you, Jackie. My goodness. All righty. Excuse me. Okay, greetings everyone. I'm Cherise Gardner and I'm an instructional designer working with Jackie as well on uh, 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 working with uh, Jackie to discuss with our partners how we uh, develop our courses and the efforts that we make to build course quality into our courses. As Sarah has explained, our credit, college credit courses have been externally reviewed by the American Council on Education and our credit exam by exam model receives the same recommendation as CLEP or advanced placement courses. Uh, the difference being that is that we wrap instructional content around our course, around the exam. The foundations of course quality for Sailor are, we begin with working with uh, active college faculty who are teaching at universities with top credentials to uh, collaborate with us to uh, build the courses. And our, us being a, a team of instructional designers and educational technologists who will uh, select, review, and sometimes create open educational resources to uh, build the course content. And we apply the best practices in e-learning and assessment design, uh, working with these experts to be sure that uh, our courses are able to pass a sec secondary view by faculty at ACE, ACE, excuse me. Our faculty again are recruited, uh, their terminal degree faculty actively teaching in their universities, in their uh, field of expertise and once they have completed working with us on the course development, we engage another group of faculty as peer reviewers to review that course and help us to make adjustments where necessary. So the course, co the course compo components are as follows. At the end result, we have the course and the course syllabus with detailing the, uh, what's in the course, how the course is conducted, how the students would be evaluated, and the course content, which may in, include uh, readings, videos, activities, all aligned to the course learning outcomes. Um, and then we also include assessments, both formative uh, and summative. So, let's take a look at what that looks like. Along, Taylor. Hmm. Sorry. Excuse me, please. When students uh, enroll in a course and they log in, they are uh, first presented with their dashboard. A dashboard is where 
they may uh, see a list of the courses in which they are enrolled. Let's take a look at Business 101. When you get into your course, the first thing you'll see on the left is the course navigation bar. This is where the students will be able to navigate their way through the course uh, and they may jump about, but here you see the sequence of units available in the course. On the right, you'll see the course progress chart. This will track the student's progression through the course and allow the student to easily uh, start where they left off. Here you'll see each course starts with an introduction, provides a time advisory as to how long it has been calculated that it will take for the student to take the course. And you see where the course is also college credit recommended. In the course introduction, the student will find their syllabus where information about the course is further detailed and a statement of the uh, uh, course learning outcomes. And they will also get more information about how they will be assessed and instructions on how to acquire their certificate upon successful completion of the course. Going to the navigation bar, you'll see that this course is broken into units. Again, each unit begins with an overview and an introduction and a statement of the unit learning outcomes followed by the course content. Again, this could be uh, links to uh, websites, documents, articles, uh, videos, lectures from faculty at other universities who have uh, certified, uh, uh, have granted open access to their course, and uh, TED Talks, a variety of content that uh, the collaborating course development faculty have helped us select and vet uh, for this course and that are aligned with the stated course outcomes. Uh, often they will also include uh, activities, recommended activities where students may apply what they've learned in this unit. And at the end of each unit, there is an opportunity for self-assessment. This is a non-graded event. It is for the benefit of the students and they may take this quiz as many times as they feel necessary until they feel that they have adequately uh, mastered the content in that unit. It is not graded and again they may do this as many times as they like. Also in the course, upon completion of the course, they have study guides when the student is preparing to take the final exam. Again broken out by uh, unit so that the student can review each unit with a, a statement of what is aligned with the outcomes, what they must be able to perform on the final exam, and uh, with links back to the particular section of the course where they may find the uh, content that they may feel they need to review. When the student is ready to take the exam, they may click on the Sailor Direct Credit Exam link here, and again, this is uh, a protected exam uh, behind a firewall and that the student uh, must pass at 70% in order to pass the class. They may take this exam up to three times uh, with a mandated 14 waiting day period between each attempt in which we encourage a student if they have not passed the course in the first attempt to take that time to go back and review the course so that they may be successful. And then once they are successful, then they may apply or go through the process of receiving their certificate uh, for that course. So in a nutshell, it's, a, it's the same uh, uh, design as far as layout for every course with the uh, navigation, the course content here, and a progress bar and a discussion board. The discussion board is where students may engage with one another to discuss problems or ideas and just to collaborate and, uh, and have someone that they can talk to about the course.
So here are our three main areas of, of, of effort and concern. We apply the best practices, working with our faculty to uh, build uh, the learning content and to design the assessments, and then have that, what happened here? have that reviewed by the American Council on Education. We use open educational resources that are sourced or created to support the learning outcomes. And we are actively working with active te actively teaching faculty uh, who are uh, terminally degreed in their discipline uh, to help us build our courses. Jackie? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sharice, for um, giving us that great, uh, fantastic um, course tour, um, as well as going over um, our course building process. Um, we really feel strongly that having this uh, commitment to uh, quality um, and having a process um, where we use expert um, faculty, expert uh, higher education faculty, um, who similarly to the um, ACE process, um, have to have teaching experience as well as terminal academic degrees to not only help us build, but also peer review these courses, um, helps contribute to us having these successful college credit um, rec reviews and recommendations with um, ACE. So it helps us to be thorough. Um, ACE is very thorough. We, we really want to uh, let you know that you can trust um, both them as well as our content. Um, how our partners are able to uh, work with us um, really depends on what the needs of the partner are. Um, one, one benefit for us is having this very flexible self-paced content really allows for creativity and uh, addressing the needs of our um, institutional partners. Um, for example, um, the Catholic University of America, uh, we work with their Metropolitan School, which uh, serves adult learners that post-traditional demographic that Sarah had mentioned earlier, um, which is growing and is going to continue to grow. Um, some resources have called it the new traditional student really for higher education. Um, they're using our courses to help students um, maintain satisfactory academic progress. Um, for instance, if a student needs a course um, that may not, because this is a smaller facet of the university, may not be offered for a semester or two, they may be able to uh, work with their advisor and take a course with us instead. And that keeps that student on track instead of the student waiting um, on the sidelines for a semester where they may have an opportunity to lose that student. Um, uh, we have been helping the University of uh, Memphis, working with the University of Memphis rather, um, and uh, I noticed that Tracy Robinson is in the attendee list here. So a quick wave hello to her. Um, with this great, one of our favorite stories to tell, Project Finish Line. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide because I'm going to highlight um, a student's story there. But it's a great program. Um, we've been recently talking with universities to help um, as they are looking at recruiting students. Um, this can work for, for domestic students as well, but they're looking particularly at international students. What is a good way to engage with international students while they're in country? Maybe they can't afford to do um, a, a full four years at your institution, but they want to study in the US eventually when, when the circumstances do get better. Um, this is a great way to work with those students, give them an opportunity to get their studies started, and then they can finish um, with your institution so that you're not losing access to those international students. And we've just started working with Greenville University, who has a program um, doing outreach just with students in country that's doing just that. Um, so in regards to University of Memphis, the Finish Line program, and you see this uh, lovely student, Melanie, here, uh, one of our favorite stories to talk about. Um, University of Memphis Finish Line reaches out to students who have um, senior standing but have stopped out. So these are students who have 30 credits or less, 
um, uh, to go toward a bachelor's. They have 90 credits or more. Um, and have stopped out to the universe, stopped out from the university, usually due to uh, financial aid or family challenges. These are students in good standing who, if life hadn't gotten in the way, would have been able to finish. Um, the university uh, contacts these students, works with them through um, a PLA project, a prior learning assessment project, and if they have gaps between uh, what they would need to complete a degree and that PLA process after combining their prior uh, credits as well and work experience and whatnot, um, they take a few courses from us. And that helps them since they may have family obligations, they have work obligations that they have to fulfill. Having these courses that, um, as we've mentioned before, are self-paced, allow them to start right away. If they need to study at three o'clock in the morning, they can. Um, if they are familiar with material and, and can move, read quickly, they can move faster. If they need more time, they can, um, as Sharice had mentioned, they can go through uh, the, the unit assessments, particularly, and other materials as many times as they uh, need to, to really reinforce that learning. Um, and so Melanie was one of the students that we were able to help graduate. And so far the program has graduated uh, 672 students who had previously stopped out. Um, so again, it's one of our favorite stories to tell. These are uh, great students and um, uh, please do check out our student story page as we have a video from another one of the students and it, it will, it's um, bring out the tissue, I'll say. It's definitely, uh, definitely heartwarming. Um, and so that ends our presentation today. We'll go into Q&A in just a moment, but I wanted to let you know that um, as we mentioned, this is our first webinar, first Sailor webinar. Uh, so thank you for bearing with us as we are smoothing transitions and learning, learning how to present in this um, new normal way. Um, and please do uh, stay in touch with us. Uh, we'll have our contact information on the next slide as well. Um, but we will have, um, we will shoot for uh, one event a month, uh, our June event, the date is still to, to be determined, uh, but we'll have a great conversation about skills and learning. Um, and uh, we'll actually be doing a joint presentation with uh, Tracy Robinson from University of Memphis um, that will be presented by ACRO. Um, so we have a webinar page. Um, you'll be able to reach out to any one of us if you're interested in future events. And we're going to go into q and I'll post our uh, contact information here as well. And I'll make sure that all of our presenters um, can chat with you all. So we had a couple of questions. Sorry, we had a couple of questions um, during the presentation on sort of ACE processes and that sort of thing. I'd encourage folks to um, check out acenet.edu um, and take a look at the College Credit Recommendation Service. You can find information there on the types of reviews that we do. Um, we talked mostly about um, courses, but uh, exams as well. We do exam reviews, um, which are a little bit different, but you can find out about the different types of reviews there, how much it costs to go through a review. Um, and if you are working with an organization that has um, ACE recommended credits, uh, so Skillsoft was, was mentioned here, um, but you haven't yet sort of made that connection, um, we can help with that. We can put you in touch with the folks there um, to make sure that your learners are completing courses in a way that give them access to our transcripts and the credentials if they are taking courses that have been evaluated by us. Wonderful. Any, and let's see, I think we've had another uh, question come up. Um, someone asked if a copy of the presentations will be available. Absolutely. Um, we can make a set of slides available um, as well as the recording will be available to you all. So if you have colleagues who were not able to attend today, um, they can use the same uh, registration link that you used to obtain an on-demand copy of the um, 
on-demand copy of this uh, presentation as well as the slides. And Jackie, there is a uh, question that's in the chat actually that I think is interesting. Okay. Um, someone, I uh, see uh, Arkana Takran is asking, can a student from any country without being present in the U.S. get a degree of U.S. colleges through Sailor? Jackie, would you like to answer that? Absolutely. Um, we have had a student do just that. Um, we had a student uh, uh, named Krishna Raj, he did not provide his last name, who resides in India and was able to use Sailor courses to earn a degree from Thomas Edison State University, which is one of our partners as well. Um, Thomas Edison has a partnership with us where um, they are distance education focused, uh, but they have a program with us um, called the Open ASBA program where students can um, use our resources as well as some of theirs um, to uh, compile all the credits that they would need for an open associates um, business administration degree. Um, and so Krishna Raj was able to do that and we uh, featured his story just recently. I will put a link um, to that story in chat. Um, Sarah, would you like to take uh, on Robert's question um, regarding ACE? Yeah, so um, on the on the corporate side, uh, our programs are evaluated every three years. Um, so that cadence is really intended again to keep pace with um, change in in higher education. On the military side, the length of an active credit recommendation actually varies based on the subject area. Um, so for some of the trainings uh, that stay the same for periods of time, it might be up to 10 years. But for uh, subject areas that change a lot, um, we need to keep it on top of healthcare fields, uh, IT fields, um, they might also be on a similar three-year schedule. Wonderful, wonderful. And there was another question, uh, Jim's question, what kind of support, study group, academic advisement, career planning, et cetera, does Sailor provide students enrolled in its courses? So Sailor Academy is, um, as we mentioned before, we're a nonprofit, we're not a university. So we are a little bit different in that um, all of our programs are self-paced. We do not confer degrees. Um, but in terms of student supports for learning, um, we have been working with our faculty SMEs to do things such as creating the study guides. Um, that has been really key to enhancing the opportunities for success for our students. Um, the vast majority of our students so far, since they are coming from all over the world, are pursuing courses for certificates. You may recall that earlier I mentioned that um, we have every sailor course um, is eligible for students to earn a certificate, um, even the courses that um, are, are eligible for credit. That's an additional step that students have to do. Um, so we're really, we're focused on the certificate students, but our uh, credit program really does enhance our, our mission both ways. We, we want to make sure all of our courses go through that same quality process. Um, uh, where we have the discourse forums and study guides and the really well curated and, and created and um, content that's put together into one cohesive unit. Um, but we won't have the career advisement and things like that because um, particularly for our college credit um, students, for the students who pursue uh, college credit with us and then send on an ACE transcript, they're going to go to an institution and get that support there. This is help for them as they are starting that journey or maybe they're continuing on that journey. Uh, I hope that answer is helpful. Certainly do reach out to me if you have um, additional questions. And I think this may answer the question for our anonymous attendee uh, as to whether or not we are accredited. Uh, again, Jackie has addressed that we are not a university per se, so no. Um, um, yeah, and I can speak to sort of a couple of 
questions for ACE here. So our, our evaluation is, is program level. So the question about sort of the full inventory of courses available on ACE website, so they're systematically reviewed. It isn't the full inventory of Sailor's courses, mm -hmm. but it is a systematic review in that any student who goes through a program that's been evaluated um, and completed all of the requirements for getting credit can get credit. They don't need to request that we review a program and it's not an individual level of review. Um, for us, really, that's about scale and trying to get rid of barriers to students. One of the, I'll say, sources of frustration is, is sometimes a student will come to a school with ACE credit recommendations and still have to go through a PLA process. Um, we want to avoid that as much as possible because we've evaluated it on the program level and those processes often carry an extra cost for students. They're basically going through evaluation twice um, when that happens. So we really want to encourage folks to use our program as much as possible um, in the sort of suite of ways that you have to bring um, students on board. Um, and I also got a question about sort of updating a university's connection with ACE. I'm just going to encourage anyone who wants to um, sort of be part of the conversation we're having right now and make sure that you're on our radar to reach out to me um, at the email address that we had up a minute ago. Um, we are right now, as I mentioned, working on strengthening the network that we've maintained of colleges in the past so that we will ask a little bit more of colleges. We will ask you to, to make some guarantees about acceptance of credit. Um, but in exchange, we can then connect students with those colleges who we know will do a good job of serving them. We think it will potentially be you know, a good uh, recruitment opportunity for colleges. Um, and really for us, it's about about, um, providing pathways for students that they can rely on with less uncertainty than currently exists in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and type my, uh, see if I can type my email address into the chat for you guys. There we go. Don't be shy. Okay. Send me an email. Fantastic. And uh, Robert had a question about how does Sailor compare to sites like Sophia, Study.com, Story to Line, etc. So I'll admit that I'm a little biased. <laughs> um, I know that uh, Straighter Line and, and Sophia and Study.com have, um, uh, have similar offerings to students in that they offer um, a way for students to earn college credit, um, but those are businesses. So they have they have some different um, services that they wrap around um, those online courses, and there's a cost that's incurred for students. Um, my recollection of Study.com is that they are about two hundred dollars um, per month for their college credit track. I think Straighter Line is something around a hundred per track, um, and we are really proud of the um, fact that we have been able to do this for a very low cost. So for instance, if a student is uh, taking a course with us um, and they decide to have an exam proctored by ProctorU, um, ProctorU is a business and they charge $25. Students um, under normal circumstances would have the option to do in-person proctoring as well, but we are glad that we have ProctorU available so that there's a remote and a safe option for them to do so right now. Um, so that's $25. Um, and then for them to, there will be some costs for them to obtain the transcript from ACE. And Sarah, would you, I, I know that the number may have changed um, for the cost. Is it still around $20 for them to set up a, a profile and send a transcript? So it is in our, our old system. We're still moving all of our organizations onto a claim. And the new system, those transcripts will be free. Um, so that's another thing that we're pretty excited about because um, $20 might not sound like a lot, but if a student is applying to multiple schools, it can be a real barrier for some of them. So on the new platform, transcripts are all electronic on the new platform. Um, if an institution really does not accept electronic transcripts, we have ways around that, but we're, we're really encouraging folks to use electronic transcripts. That's part of what allows us to make them free on the, on the new platform. That's 
fantastic news. I'm really excited to um, learn that transcripts are going to be made available for free. So for $25 per course, a student could um, earn the college, the potentially earn the college and university credit that they need to get them into or back into a program. Um, and that's money that, that means that they can invest their money really into um, the tuition uh, and credits that they need to be able to finish. Um, I, I think that's, that's, one of, that's one of the differences that I think um, that I'll spend the most time highlighting. And as I said, we have a broader mission to um, provide access to education to anyone anywhere in the world. Um, but this college, this college credit piece is very important to us and we're hoping to expand the network of schools um, because that's going to uh, hopefully in turn benefit our partner institutions as they have an expanded network of students who have really already demonstrated that they are um, very well academically capable in being able to pursue a course on their own. I hope yeah. that answers your question, but I will put my email in, in the chat as well, um, just in case you want to reach out to me. And the new transcript platform is live now. Schools may already have gotten some new transcripts. We're just in the process of moving all of our organizations over. It does ask them to change some of their processes around approving transcripts and that sort of thing. So um, recognizing that no one is sitting around waiting for work to fall into their laps. We're, we're moving folks along as fast as we can. So our hope is that by the fall, everyone will be moved over onto the new platform. Fantastic. And uh, Robert had one more question. He said, um, ACE is supplying the transcript for Sailor. And that's, that's actually, that might be a little bit of a misnomer. Um, I, uh, Sailor Academy can also supply a transcript. Most of our partners would prefer to have the ACE transcript because it's well recognized. Um, I would think that since um, particularly programs like Straighter Line and Study.com are reviewed under ACE as well, um, students are obtaining an ACE transcript as well to transfer over. Sarah, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's similar. They have options. So um, a number of our organizations produce their own transcripts or for our exam providers score reports, that sort of thing. Those students also have access to an ACE transcript, um, which is particularly important if they're taking courses from multiple different organizations. They can get them all on one credential, one document to send to a school. Um, but, you know, they might, there are reasons why they might choose um, a transcript from study.com or from uh, Sailor specifically um, based on what they need or what the school has told them they need. We really do encourage students to contact the school and start working with them sort of as early in the process as possible just because credit for prior learning um, policies vary so much across the board. We wanna make sure that, that they're being steered in the right direction. Wonderful. And uh, one person asked if there is a list of uh, courses that are offered for college credit. So I will put that um, in, in the chat as well. Um, and we can send that with our after materials, but do reach out to me um, or any one of us if you have uh, questions. We're, we're always here to um, be able to provide. provide. I'm sorry. And I'll send, I'll put that, I'll put that in the chat here so you all can see. Lamont Wilson had a question. Uh, oh, I, th I think that was, is there a list of OER texts for the courses that Sailor offers for credit? Um, you can, I'm sorry, I misunderstood that question then. Um, you can uh, peek into any courses. We do have an OER uh, bookshelf um, of texts that we have used in the past, but you can uh, peek through any of our courses um, and I can send you a, uh, a way that you can look at the resources that are used, yes. If, uh, Lamont, if you are in a course on the menu, there is a uh, link to the course resources. The, the, the uh, resources uh, are not just a book, but they may also be a collection of other open educational resources. So every course has that resource link and it details uh, the, the specific texts as well as other links used in that course. Um, great. So this has been a really great session. Um, if you have any 
any questions, please do let us know. Uh, Sarah has said that she has to leave us. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today. And thank, thank you, thank you everyone. for um, joining us for our first webinar. We're, we're really excited to continue to do this. Please reach out to um, either Sarah, Sharice, or myself. And looking forward to seeing you all in June. Have a great day. Bye.